Nigeria is a country of 150 million people divided roughly between a Christian south and a Muslim north. It's a fault line along which there are often deadly clashes. Both sides stand accused of encouraging such violence. Do you believe Nigeria is on this religious front line? There's no doubt about that. That can obviously sometimes have violent episodes though, for example in Jos. How do you feel when that happens, when this front line turns violent? Uh, is that part of the course of saving souls? I believe that any time light begins to shine, there's bound to be a little resistance from darkness. Um, so that one is, is, is a settled matter. Unfortunate though it may be, uh, some politicians go in the guise of religion to perpetrate evil. I do not think that genuine Christians and genuine Muslims will fight. But I, I think that you know, the, most of the crisis we see is not really religion, it's politics. Some politicians choose to use religion as a tool um, for their own ulterior motives. Uh, talking about, one cannot really talk about the um, religious crisis in Nigeria without really looking at or addressing the problems in Nigeria itself, the, the political problems in the country, like we've said before, a thousand times that I don't see what happens in Nigeria as persecution. I see rather as religious and ethnic crises spy stuff or influenced by politics. scenery I had known and imagined were no longer there. These had now been punctuated in several areas with burnt down and desolate buildings all over the place. How long shall we continue to be here? How long can we continue to have patience? We are still suffering after the deployment of troops. You will see that actually only in the midst of innocent harmless people. It's more than religious. It's more than political. It is something that has to do with the threat of our own national security. Those are flying in jihads. They have vowed they will not stop until they claim Plateau State become their land. And they want to make everybody in Plateau State must be a Muslim. You must be Islamized. And that is why they are handing over to from their forefathers, they fought our forefathers. They, they vowed that we must become Muslim. And if we are not going to submit to Islam, we will never have peace. Jos is the city that is attacked more than any other place in Nigeria. And why is Jos so sensitive? Why is just the city that's attacked? I have said before a thousand times, apart from the politics, any man who has confessed the Lord Jesus Christ as his savior, is bound to face opposition from the kingdom of darkness. What did Jesus Christ said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. What is the rock 
you remember the point he said that and he asked his disciples, what do people say I am? Some say you're the, you're the, the, the apostle, the prophets don't die, you're, the, you're John the Baptist, you're Elijah, you're so and so. And then he said, but what do you say I am? And they kept quiet. And Peter, full of faith, came forward and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Christ said, upon this rock, upon the revelation that I am the son of God, I will build my church. So the church is founded on the principle, on the core belief, that Jesus is the son of the living God who came to die for the world, to save the world. So like I said before, any man who confesses Jesus Christ to be the Lord of the world, the Savior of the world, and the Son of God, that man is bound to face attack like you see just in part of the world. You see, so how, why do I say it? When Christ was to be baptized, when he was baptized of John the Baptist, yeah, the Bible said that heaven was open and the voice came out and said, This is my beloved son, even when I am well pleased. This is my son. Just immediately, the Bible says, and he was led, he was driven, he was moved by the Holy Ghost, by the Spirit of God, to the wilderness, to be tempted of the devil. And God the Satan said unto him, said, If thou be the Son of God, if thou be the Son of God, when he tempted Christ, all he said was, If thou be the Son of God, challenging the very thing God has said concerning his son, when he was baptized, thou art my beloved son. If it is not the Son of God, an attack on the church from the very beginning. The Bible says the kingdom has suffered violence and the violence taken by force. So right from the very day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has suffered, suffered violence and the violence taken by force. From child memorial, attack on the church. And Satan would raise his ugly head again when Christ was made on the first day. He used to the guy in the side of Christ and said, If thou be the Son of God, save yourself and save us as well. So we, 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 I see from a very spiritual point of view that believing Nigerian Christians in know because of their confession, confession of Jesus Christ as the Son of God, they give us us. Happen to us in Jesus' name. Amen. We are alive to protect our land in Jesus' name. We are alive to protect our land in Jesus' name. I will not die. Tony Abuja na bani mama kitewa. Zaa zaa keshe mu. Loa keshe nde zaa mu ira mo kose a zaa tere mu. Zaa kama mu ana bubu je mu kuma. Weche wa mu mu nza mo ni abu. Ya kama ene zaa mo na ona abu. Okay, almasi kuse i aiki sa ona kasa. Kaji shiga aiki sa ona kaka kau tuwa hamsi. Ifi papa mzima kore. Aya adua mu na mu kesa a ketere mu. Adua mu na mu kesa tu gone abu nde kuke tepia. Sabo da kama ya ishe mu akaba. Ya ishe mu aka. Ethnicity is at play with religion here. And I'll tell you why Joss is sensitive, why Joss is, is the center of the attacks. It's because of this. Joss is spelled J O S. Joss. J O S. And it's an acronym. I'll tell you what it means Jesus our Savior. Jesus our Savior. Go on Wikipedia and search it. You see what I'm saying? It means Jesus our Savior is believed to be called so. And that is the reason why. Because as a city itself confesses Jesus to be a savior, that's why Jesus is attacked. So it's 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 disheartening though that politics as as attacks ethnicity and religion to for their evil deeds and purpose and I think the international community should be praying for Nigeria, the church, the body of Christ around the world and the body of Christ in the southern part of Nigeria should keep praying because why the government in the country is insensitive. The government in the country is corrupt so they cannot do anything, they don't want to do anything about it. But I tell you what, let the international community like you guys, thank you very much Nanda, 
keep praying for Nigeria. Keep praying for the people of God, the church in the northern part of Nigeria. It's it's pathetic. Now I tell you, the, the thing about Nigeria or the northern part of Nigeria is not like some parts of some countries where uh, you're not allowed to worship God, where you're not allowed to, where you're not allowed to be open, co confess Jesus Christ openly. It's not. It's not like there is. So that's why I say it's not persecution. Yeah, it's just religious and ethnic crisis, which is largely political as well. And the, the, the thing here is, like I said, it's not. There is. It's a very Christian country, but in the north, there's been several problems several religious crises and clashes so it's quite a free country it's quite a free country to practice whatever you want to do it's free to have whatever religion but the problem is some extremist muslims attack the brethren in the church and because our faith teaches us forgiveness and peace and love and we don't retaliate we don't we don't resent that action they take that as weakness so that's the problem. It's it's not necessarily persecution. It's hugely ethnic. Nigeria is hugely divided by its ethnicity, its religion, its politics. It, it's so we cannot address. We cannot really address the religious crisis without addressing the politics of the country. So it's it's just it's confusing. In the south were completely unaware of the extent to which Christians in the northern states were being terrorized and murdered. My next observation was that most people were fast ditching ties with jobs. Many people were fleeing the city in search of safer places to live and work. Igbo and Yoruba settlers with successful businesses and good paying jobs had left and returned to their hometowns for fear of further murder attacks. One of my close friends told me that the situation was likened to the 1994 genocide in Rwanda and Burundi, but instead of ethnic cleansing, Joss was experiencing religious cleansing, cleansing of the Christian majority. And because there were casualties on the side of Muslims too, Joss had now become a war zone. This is a war. It's not persecution, it's a war. It's a war. We have to, as a country, we have to wake up to the realization that this is a war. In the name of God, in the name of Allah. Tell me how many women shall the dream come to pass? Tell me how many movies turn out real? There are so many questions, questions I like to ask, so you can understand exactly how I feel. Tell me how many people wish they were somewhere else, someone that thinks the world wants them to be. Tell me how many babies will be born. The firm Easter message of the Anglican Archbishop of Jos, Ben Kwashi, was, and I quote, To those who bring death to us, may we bring life to them. He said death was an enemy, but yet he preferred a message of restraint, asking Christians not to adopt a killing for killing approach. He is indeed right, but it's difficult not to sympathize with the Christian brothers and sisters who say they can no longer turn the other cheek to the attacks of the persecutors. There is visible hurts and pain from the unending atrocities. Unprovoked killings have gone on for too long and the federal government appears insensitive to the sufferings of Christians who are the main victims in most of these circumstances. They seem unconcerned about the destruction of our once proud city. How can we respond to the plight of our brothers and sisters? No one should have to suffer or die because of their religious beliefs. Our land is crying out for help. Our people are pleading for justice. Our people are dying.